echo. Never have I ever. There's a dull throbbing in my head when I wake up, a remnant of the raging headache that I'd had yesterday. I take some Tylenol when TJ goes into the bathroom, so he doesn't see. I don't want to worry him. While he's taking one of his insanely long showers, I go down to the lobby to get some breakfast. When I come back into the room, balancing two plates full of bagels, bacon and eggs, I'm surprised to see TJ already done. He's busy brushing his fur in the mirror, trying to tame the comical, fluffed-up look he has going on. I can't believe I forgot my shampoo. Look at how ridiculous I look. He holds his arms out to me and Jenna. Jenna grunts, not really paying attention as she types away furiously on her laptop. Well, I think it's kind of cute. TJ smiles. You mean funny? No, you just look a little chubby. I smirk at TJ's mortified looks I set the plates down on the table, which forces Jenna to push her laptop aside for the moment. TJ opens a packet of jam and butter before spreading it neatly on a bagel cut in half. I watch as some of it sticks to the long fur run round his mouth while he nibbles at it. He wipes it away with a napkin, only to start the process over again. It's so sad that you're going to spend all your time doing homework, Jenna. Finals are way too close to too much else, TJ. Jenna doesn't even look up from her laptop as she responds, focused solely on whatever it is she's typing. I'm pretty sure she just shoved half a bagel into her mouth before she went back to work. TJ sits there quietly for a moment, taking another bite. You think you'll have time to do anything today? Jenna doesn't answer for a few seconds, the only sound the faint patter of the keyboard. Finally, she stops and look up, looks up for the first time in probably an hour. I don't think so. I have a lot of work to do. Why don't you two go out and do something? We will. It would just be nice if you could go with us. I snort. Yeah, come with us to do more work at Janice's house again. TJ lowers his ears. Again? TJ takes another bite of his bagel and it doesn't look like he's going to say anything. I sigh. Yeah, she kind of cornered him and got him to say he'd do more work. Jenna rolls her eyes and returns her attention back to the laptop. Janice taking advantage of people? Shocker. Jenna. TJ project- protests quietly. You know, she used to give me some sort of sop story at the diner to get me to tip better. TJ frowns. Well, she does have a tough life, Jenna. Despite being annoyed at having to go back to Janice's, I find myself siding with TJ. Oh, I think you do whatever you can here to make money. It's probably hard to own a house as just a waitress. Yeah, well, maybe don't be a waitress in a ship crap town. She could at least try to find something else if it's that hard. TJ's still frowning, his ears down. I can tell he wants to say something more, but Jenna is an intimidating figure to try and argue with. It's quiet for another minute before Jenna sighs loudly. Sorry, I'm just a little stressed out right now. I have a lot of stuff to get done. It's all right. I wish we could help you out. Jenna laughs without any humour. I wish you could too. TJ falls silent, staring at the small piece of bagel held between his fingers. Mm. My phone buzzes in my pocket and I take it out, surprised to see a text from Carl. Yo! I stare at it for a moment. Huh. I type a quick hi back. Who is it? TJ asks around his last bite of bagel, holding a napkin daintily in front of his mouth as he chews. Carl. Jenna's typing stops again. Really? How's he doing? Well, I don't know. He seems okay. I realised then I hadn't really had a chance to ask Jenna or anyone else what had happened with Carl yesterday. Where was he? You said you guys found him. Yeah. Jenna pauses, staring at the screen of her laptop. What happened? I don't really know. Flynn found him in the crawl space, apparently. The crawl space? For some reason, I get chills running up my arms. What in the world was he doing down there? Jenna shakes her head. When I went down there, he was just sitting on the ground and Flynn told me to leave. I raise my brows and TJ gives me a confused look. He was standing in front of him so I couldn't see him, like if he was upset or something. What was he doing? Jenna shrugs. Flynn took him upstairs and we left after that. 
Was he, like, drunk or something? TJ seems to try and word it delicately. Jenna shrugs again, then turns back to her writing. He's always high, isn't he? Mm. I look back down at my phone. Wanna hang out? Is he that high right now? It takes a second to figure it out. When I do, I look back up at TJ. What time does Janice want us over? We'll go in the evening, when it's not so hot. TJ looks down and lowers his ears again. Because I don't want TJ to get all apologetic again, I keep talking. Do you want to go hang out with Carl? TJ smiles. Yeah, that could be a lot of fun. All right then. I type a reply back to Carl, telling him I'd be bringing TJ over. For some reason though, I can't shake the feeling that something is off. Stepping out into the parking lot, TJ immediately starts heading for the road while I pause by the car holding my keys. Um, TJ turns around. Hmm. Are we, are we walking? I look up the road toward the foothills of the mountains. Carl's house an intimidating speck in the distance, barely visible through the heat haze. Oh, did you want to drive? I shield my eyes against the sun, only just over the mountains, but still promising a hellscape by noon. I mean, did you want to walk? I can see TJ's demeanour deflate a little bit as he starts walking back towards me in the car. We can drive. He smiles at me, but I sigh and shove my keys back into my pocket. No, we can go for a walk. It'll give us more time to talk, anyway. Oh, okay. TJ smiles and waits for me to catch up to him before we start up the road. While I'm not looking forward to trekking back to Janice's house in the heat, I'd rather TJ be in an upbeat mood. We're pretty quiet on the way up. It isn't until we're passing Janice's house that I finally break the silence. Man, why did you have to say yes? I groan half teasingly, shoving my shoulder into his, sending him stumbling a little ways into the road. I'm sorry. Is it so hard to say no? Well, yeah, it definitely is. I sigh. It would be fine if we weren't on vacation with friends we might never see again. TJ sulks a bit. Don't say that. Well, it's kind of true. I remember the trip is already sort of ruined because of Flynn. Anyway, it's not that easy, Chase. Especially when she's all smiling and expectant like that. You should stop letting people take advantage of you. TJ stares at the ground. Sorry. And stop apologising. TJ flattens his ears and I realise that my tone might have been a bit too harsh. Okay, now I'm sorry. I was mostly joking. But it's frustrating to see you get pushed around. I don't really get pushed around. I ignore him. And get taken advantage of. She doesn't take advantage of me. Why do you think she only asks you for these things? He opens his mouth but I don't let him answer. Because she knows you'll say yes. That's basically the definition of taking advantage of someone. I nudge him again with my shoulder, but he manages not to fall into the road this time. You've got to be a little more assertive. Stand up for yourself more often. TJ shoves his hands in his pockets. So just say no to people? Not just when it comes to saying no. Stand up to people being mean to you too. I don't mention Flynn, but I'm pretty sure he knows what I'm getting at. I try to give him an encouraging smile, but he doesn't look at me. Feels great, man. Once you do it once, you can't stop. TJ looks away, out into the desert. Sounds like you just want me to be mean to people. I shake my head. You can be nice and assertive at the same time. It's a good combination. TJ's quiet for a few minutes as we start the painful uphill portion of the trek towards Carl's mansion. I do it because I like to do it, you know. Hmm? I'm starting to pant a little, my short, stubby legs already burning. I like to help her out. It feels good. Like, it makes you feel better about yourself. It makes me feel better about a lot of things. There's a sudden shift in his tone that cuts me off from saying anything else. It's a tone I'm not used to hearing from him. I wonder if I went too far with the whole being assertive thing. I feel like there's a whole lot more going on under the surface, but now doesn't feel like the time to delve into it. I tried to think of something else to talk about, to change the subject. 
Anyway, maybe the apologising thing is just part of your heritage. TJ laughs, dispelling the tension easily. Maybe. Well, if you do go back, at least you'll fit in with all the nice people. It's just a stereotype, not all that true. There were mean people in Wasatchua. Well, not like here, though. TJ nods. Yeah, not like here. We're quiet for a few more minutes. Carl's house promisingly close now. I'm distracted, looking up at it when suddenly TJ's shoulder checks me right off the road, tripping me over my own feet into the sagebrush. What the hell? I shout as I lay in the dirt, the dust cloud clearing, to reveal a mortified TJ still standing on the side of the road. Oh my gosh, I didn't mean to knock you over, I'm so... He catches himself, though the horrified look is still on his face. I stare up at him for a while, then burst out laughing. I see his tail and ears relax, his floofed out fur laying back down. He smiles, seemingly relieved. You're learning! He rubs his shoulder sheepishly. I guess so. We stand a good couple of minutes on Carl's doorstep, ringing the doorbell over and over. I can hear the heavy beat of some hip-hop song through the door, and the ground. I swear the windows look like they're about to bust out with how much they're shaking. Finally, I send him a text, and that's when the music finally stops and the door swings open. As it does, TJ and I are blasted with a wave of pot, with just a touch of booze lingering underneath. Carl grins at us, his eyes bloodshot and fur must up. What fuck did you guys so long to get here? TJ frowns, rubbing his nose inconspicuously. I don't think I've ever seen Carl this far gone. I stare at him, he stares back at us, his grin never wavering. I finally break the silence. Are you okay? Carl suddenly gets a very serious look on his face. Chase. Gravely, he reaches out to put both his hands on my shoulder. I have... He smirks and set his face sternly again. Never felt better. He brings me into a hug and whispers fiercely into my ear. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. He suddenly shoves me back and whirls on TJ who cringes. Carl goes after him, sweeping him off his feet like the lynx is his brand new bride. Carl! Get inside before you get heat struck, fluff cheeks. I stand there on the doorstep as Carl takes the cat inside. TJ throw me a wide-eyed look over the ram's broad shoulder. I stare back, wondering if this was such a good idea before stepping in. Pot smell aside, the coolness of the mansion is a welcome relief to the quickly rising heat behind me. I'm just in time to see Carl toss TJ into a two-cushion couch before flopping onto a bigger one across from it. He smiles at me and pats the cushion next to him. I sit down on the last cushion, leaving a space between the two of us. I'm just a little worried about how handsy he's being right now. Carl shrugs and kicks up his feet on the cushion between us, tapping me with his hooves. We sit there for an agonisingly awkward ten seconds before TJ clears his throat. So, Carl, how have you been? Carl rolls his, he rolls his head on his shoulders to snap his gaze in the direction of TJ, who gulps. TJ, I've just been peachy, you get me? TJ's ears twitch. Yes? Super, super -y. Carl giggles quietly to himself. He stares at the seed in for a while, continuing to tap me with his hooves. I look down and see they're leaving hoof-shaped prints of white dust on my pants. Man, I'm glad you guys are here. Thought I was going to go crazy. How come? Carl interlocks his fingers behind his head. Oh, this house, man. You're crazy in it when no one's around. Flynn spent the night, but then he had to go to work. Ah. DJ seems to run out of things to say, leaning back on the couch as his tail twitches around nervously. Carl doesn't seem to mind, though, staring peacefully at the ceiling. I exchange glances with TJ who shrugs worriedly at me. I look at the massive flat screen. You want to watch something? Carl flicks his eyes to the TV. Uh, have you seen a new Luce Lobo movie? I have to think about that. Well, not since last summer, I think. I haven't. Oh, it's the fucking shit dudes. Carl sticks his legs in the air, swiveling on his butt before launching himself off the couch to land on his hooves awkwardly. He stumbles, falling into TJ's couch. The lynx tries to steady him, but the ram is off before he can, grabbing the remote. 
Suddenly he spins around and tosses his phone at me, I have to lunge to catch it. Chase, please order some goddamn pizza, I'm starving. Uh, what? I stare at his phone. He sighs loudly at me. The Giano's app, duh. It takes me a second to find it in the sea of random game apps. Oh, so uh, what do you guys want? Well, I'll shove anything from Giano's into my fat face. I stare at him. So order anything. Okay. I end up letting TJ pick the topping since he's the vegetarian. Once I've ordered the extra large pizza, Carl's already started up the movie. I didn't know anyone delivered out here. Carl sits down with a beer in his hand. I wonder if I should tell him not to drink any more. Honestly, I don't know if the way he's acting is more due to the pot or the drink. He grins. Well, that's what's so great about Giano's. They'll deliver anywhere if you pay. He takes his swig and belches. Price of delivery is the same as a fucking pizza, though. He stares at me before pointing at his beer. You want one? I glance at TJ staring hard at the screen. Maybe I'll have one with a pizza. Me and TJ have some yard work to do for Janice. Carl wrinkles his nose. Lame. Do you want to go with this, Carl? Carl thinks and gives a massive shrug. Well, I can tag along. Might not be able to do any real work, though. He pats his stomach. Swear to God I'll hurl. That's fine. TJ smiles, but Carl seems to be watching the movie now, which is already a few minutes into the intro. The pizza doesn't arrive for another hour, and when it finally does, the slices are almost room temperature. Still, with the pizza, beer and a movie, I start to kind of enjoy myself. By the end of it, Carl seems to have sobered up a little bit. Not a whole bunch, but to the point where he's at least coherent. He turns off the TV and sighs, flat on his back on the couch at this point, his legs across my lap. I'm fucking stuffed. I agree, and I'm feeling even less inclined to go over to Janice's place. TJ's pulled out his phone and now he's staring at it with his ears lowered. I'm about to ask him what's wrong, but that's when Carl nudges me with his leg. Hey, you guys want to play a game? I look at him cautiously. What kind of game? Um... Carl looks around and finds a row of three bottles on the ground next to the couch. Two of them empty, one half empty. Never have I ever. TJ gives a nervous laugh. But Carl, I don't drink. Give it, give it a try. I frown, giving Carl a look. Or we could just do ten fingers. You don't have to drink for that one. Carl pouts. Well, you're boring as hell today, Chase. All right, we'll do both. You guys can do the ten fingers bullshit. He struggles to sit up, burping again while he does. He leans over the groan and picks up his beer. Okay, I'll go first. I hold up ten fingers and TJ's is the same, somewhat reluctantly. Never have I ever... Carl seems to think hard, then grins. Had sex. TJ's ears flatten and I glare at Carl. Really? We're going there already? Carl shrugs. What? That's the first question everyone asks. I lower a finger, still glaring. Isn't this game about getting to know things about people you don't already know about? I look over at TJ, not surprised to see all of his fingers still up, though he's still blushing. I'm surprised you haven't, though. You've had girlfriends. Carl sneers at me. Turns out having to lift up my own guts they can suck me off turns them off. Never gone past that. So they still sucked you off? Low jobs don't count. Uh, yeah, they do. It's called oral sex. Oh, man. I suddenly become very aware of a beet red lynx sitting across from us. I cough loudly and sit up straight, trying to think of something that's interesting but still G-rated for TJ. Never have I ever been in a fight. A physical fight, I mean. Carl takes a drink. TJ's fingers stay up. Who did you fight? The fuck have you been? Remember Clint? Oh, yeah. TJ starts to lower his finger too, then stops. Well, he mostly attacked us. We didn't really fight back, so it's not really a fight? Carl shrugs. Well, me and Flynn have gotten into it before. Well, you already took a drink, so... I look over at TJ. Your turn. TJ looks off to the side, seeming to think hard. Never have I ever failed a test. TJ grins. 
I lower a finger, smirking. The car lets out a snort. Cute. The amount of disdain in his voice has me looking over at him, but he's already checking down his beer. His burp seems to shake the couch. All right. Never have I ever kissed a dude. Carl! What? Oh, I've never actually seen you kiss Leo, so... Oh, wait. Oh, maybe I have. Meh. He shrugs again. I lower a finger, rolling my eyes. TJ, of course, doesn't. As I'm trying to think of my own question, I suddenly feel something warm press against the side of my face. I blanch away out of instinct and turn to find Carl with his eyes closed and lips puckered. Carl! TJ sits on the couch, his face a portrait of comically cartoonish shock. Alright, now I have. Carl takes a big gulp of beer. I'm not sure how to react, but TJ's reaction is enough to make the whole thing seem funny, instead of like sexual harassment. I mean, you can't do it after the question's been asked, right? Carl puts his chin on a fist, fluttering his eyes in a way he probably thinks is seductive. You can look it up if you want. I shake my head, wiping the side of my face as I try to think. Never have I ever flown in an airplane. Carl and TJ both lower a finger. Really? That's crazy. I shrug. Hardly ever been out of the state in my life. Well, that's tragic. It kind of is. And so it goes. The game continues for another 20 minutes, most of the questions innocent enough. Still, I notice that every time TJ takes his turn, Carl gets more and more agitated. Never have I ever done drugs, never have I ever been late to class, never have I ever gotten less than an A- in a class. Still, I can tell, tell that TJ's directing it mostly at me. Partly because he's been mischievous, and partly because I think he's generally trying to figure me out. Carl's mood continues to sour, though, and all seems to build until the sixth round. Never have I ever been in a car accident. I lower a finger. You've crashed before? I mock glare at him. Why do you automatically assume it was my fault? Oh, so... I mean, uh... My dad was driving and we got rear-ended. Oh. That's when I noticed that Carl hasn't spoken at all since the question was asked. I look over at him and see that he's got the bottle resting on his knee as he watches TJ. I lean over to poke at him. You okay? He glances at me before turning back to TJ. You knew I'd been in an accident. TJ looks at Carl, confused. I did? Yeah, I told you at the motel when you first got here. Oh, yeah, sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah, okay. TJ continues to look confused. Carl says his lap for a while and I start to wonder if the game is over. Then he looks up and stares at TJ, rubbing his chin. Hmm. He seems to be thinking hard. Uh, never have I ever... We wait. Carl smiles. Never have I ever killed someone. What follows is dead silence. Carl stares straight at TJ, still with a smile on his face. TJ still looks confused. That's a weird thing to say. Is it? TJ freezes up as if ice-cold water being dumped over his head. I look at Carl slowly, but he's not looking at me at all. TJ's clenched paws rest in his lap, his face expressionless, almost as we both realise what Carl's getting at. We sit in that silence for what feels like almost a minute. Carl finally breaks the frozen portrait that we're all in, leaning back into the back of the couch. You know, my life has been going downhill since that happened. TJ and I don't say anything but us watching Carl. School, grades, drugs, whatever. I don't know. Seems like it all started after whatever it was that happened. Carl looks pointedly at TJ again. Carl. My voice comes up shocked and bewildered. That seems to get through to him a little bit, his long ears flicking down briefly. TJ continues to stare back at him, and I'm reminded of how he looked when Flynn was having a go at him. Carl finally looks down, away from TJ. So I was in the crawl space the other day, and I found an old letter from Sydney. I don't say anything, neither does TJ. Carl waits a while, then goes on. I haven't opened it yet. I said it was a treasure hunt on the front. A treasure hunt. Sydney absolutely loved treasure hunts. 
He was always making them in his spare time. They were usually pretty bad and the prizes at the end were always pretty awful. It would always take some convincing on his part to get us to go on one. I don't know why I have it, but it's made me... Carl stops talking and closes his eyes, pressing himself deeper into the soft cushions of the couch. Maybe if we knew what happened, we could fix some of our problems. TJ finally stands up and Carl's eyes snap open when he does. I watch him too, having no idea what he's about to do. Because of the look on his face, I wonder if he's about to actually do something violent, attack Carl or something. His expression is dark, not like I've ever seen him, even when Flynn was yelling at him. Instead, though, he just stands there for a few moments, staring at Carl. Carl looks away again, his ears lowered. Self-improvement starts with realising what the actual problem is, Carl. That... that didn't sound like TJ at all, not even the voice. Carl seems shocked as well, as he finally looks up at the links. Stop blaming others and start blaming yourself. His voice is calm and smooth but ice cold. TJ turns on his heel and stalks towards the door, his fur fluffed out. Finally snap out of it and stand up as TJ opens the door. I take one look, look, last look at Carl as he's slumped on the couch, his head down. I'll, I'll call you later, OK, Carl? Carl doesn't say anything. So with that, I hurry up the door that TJ left open. I catch up to the links about a hundred yards down the road, trying to match his brisk pace. It's late afternoon at this point and the heat hits me like a ton of bricks. Sweat already threatens to drip off my chin as I approach TJ. He slows down when he hears me panting, letting me catch up. We walk in silence for a good 15 minutes and I almost jump when TJ finally speaks up. Can you believe he did that? I take a few deep breaths, gathering the time I need to form a response. I... I think he was just really high and drunk. TJ shakes his head. He knew what he was saying. Sure, but, but his inhibitions are down. TJ isn't as upset as I thought he would be, at least not in the way I thought he would be. Instead, he seems more angry than anything. I think it's because he's been talking to... talking to Flynn. Who knows what he's been saying to him? That could definitely be the case. TJ finally sighs and stares at the ground, his ears falling. I can tell he's about to finally start crying, so I quickly put my arm around his shoulders. Hey, it's okay. He was seriously drunk than I ever seen him. He's not going to remember any of this. He doesn't look up. TJ, you are a huge reason why we've all stuck together at this point. TJ doesn't say anything and I see his eyes watering up. I could be making it worse, but I give his shoulder another squeeze. You're the glue, and like you said, Carl's blaming his own problems on everyone else. This has nothing to do with you. TJ sighs, leaning against me a little. I take this as a good sign and nudge him. Listen, let's get to Janice's place and get those chores out of the way. After that, we can go get some ice cream at Ray's, okay? All right. TJ set, lets out a small laugh and we continue down the road for another ten feet like that. Then he suddenly pulls away from me, faces me and hugs me tight. He buries his face in my chest as I feel his fingers clench into the back of my shirt. He holds me like that for a long time. We get to Janice's house a good half an hour later, me covered in sweat, TJ airing out his shirt. It's five at this point, but the sun is still pounding down the back of my head like a lead weight. Janice opens the door almost the second we knock, and can tell immediately that something's off. First of all, she's got no pants on. I catch a glimpse of her large white panties before I snap my eyes back up, staring hard at the coyote's face. I can't see TJ, but by the funny way he's breathing, I'm pretty sure he's noticed as well. Janice spreads out her hands, grinning. Well, I'll be, you made it. We gawk at her for another few seconds before TJ finally squeaks out. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, um... Janice suddenly steps forward towards the links and cups his face in her hands. I keep my eyes up, trying to focus on her face. She squishes TJ's face to the point where his lips purse out a little bit. You, TJ, are a lifesaver. You know that. She says it sincerely and I can see TJ trying to pull back. Unfortunately, it also looks that like the coyote has a good grip on his face, because everything but his head moves back. Thank you, Janice. 
TJ tries to speak from his squashed face. Um, Janice, what did you want us to do today? I break in, hoping to move her attention away from ripping TJ's cheeks off. She seems to be really enjoying the tufts of fur there. Oh, Chase, you're here too? Yeah, we're going to work on it together. Well, alright, how about I head out there and show you two? My eyes flick down to the bottom half for just a second and I immediately regret it. You, you, uh, there's no way around it. You want to get dressed first? Hmm? Janice looks down. Oh, that. Well, I've just got to apologise now. I was in the middle of getting ready for work. I just forgot what I was doing. I glance at TJ, then quickly back to the coyote. Oh, well, we can wait. Nonsense. It'll only take a sec. I'm left open mouth, following the coyote automatically as TJ follows closely behind me. A quick glance around reassures me there isn't anyone around at the moment, but if someone does come around... Janice marches us out to the back, to the few wooden remnants of the shed we'd moved earlier. She points to the ground. I want you two to dig a hole right here. TJ st stays just slightly behind me, as if using me as a shield to Janice's shameless immodesty. A hole? Yep, in a rectangle from here to here. Janice marks a line in the dirt with her foot before walking about five feet in the other direction and marking another line. And three feet wide, at least three feet deep, if not more. I nod through her instructions, just trying to get through this as quickly as possible. Okay, what are we doing this for? Janice stops, scratching the back of her head. Hmm. A pool. Gonna have a pool back here. A pool? Yeah, a nice little pool. She grins at us and I quickly nod at her. Okay, we'll get right to work. Uh, shovel's in the garage, right? I'm doing everything I can to get her back inside. Yeah, need anything else? I can make you lemonade before I leave. No, we'll just get water if we need it. Well, all right. No need to finish it today if you can't. I know how hot it is. Janice turns to leave, but not before reaching out and pin pinching TJ's cheek almost viciously. He squints his eyes, ears flat as he just stands there and takes it. And with that, she hums her way back to the house. I wait until I hear the door close. Oh my god, she's gone insane. TJ stays quiet, staring at the spot on the ground that Janice marked out. Seriously, maybe we should go. No, no, she's probably just having another off day or something. I shake my head. And this is definitely not a pool. TJ kicks at the dirt and I shiver as I see a small spider skitter across the ground. Either she's lost it and we're doing nothing here, or we're digging a grave. Oh, come on, Chase. This was a bad idea. I hear the garage door opening and shut my mouth. The car engine starts up and then I see an old rusty white sedan pull out of the driveway. Janice waves at us and blows a kiss, which I'm pretty sure is directed at TJ. Then she peels off like she's drag racing the diner that's less than a mile away. So, who do you think she's on her way to murder? Stop. I look back at TJ. You think she even put her pants on? TJ shudders and looks back at the ground. Let's, let's just get this done, then I promise I won't do any more chores for her, okay? I sigh. All right. Just remember whose fault this is if this ends up being our grave. The work is tougher than I thought it would be. We both start at opposite ends of the little trench thing we're making. Janice said she should do more than three feet if we could, but this whole thing is bullshit. Which I'm sure it is. Then I'm not doing any more than the minimum. I'm at least glad to see TJ returning back to his cheerful, bubbly self. We even almost get into a dirt clod war. That comes to a quick end when I hit TJ in the thigh with a rock-filled one. About two hours later, the sun is comfortably low, or a little over halfway done. It's at that point that I get a text message from Carl. Sorry. I look at it for a while until TJ finally looks up. Everything okay? I debate whether or not to tell him now that he's in such a good mood. It's hard to tell exactly what will make TJ feel better or worse, I've come to realise. Still, I think he can tell who it is, already judging by how slanted back his ears are. When it's from Carl, just says sorry. Ah. TJ stops digging, pressing his shovel into the dark and moist dirt at the bottom of the trench. That's it? That's it. Are you going to respond? I don't know. Should I? TJ starts digging again. Yeah. 
TJ tilts his head down. I need to apologise too. Now that seems more like TJ. Well, what should I say? TJ stops digging again and looks up at me. Um, I look up at him expectantly. Okay, so I'm trying to be more assertive, like you said. Uh, oh? I didn't expect him to say that. Is that why? TJ looks down, so I stop myself. Is that why he'd acted so strange at Carl's mansion? Sorry, never mind. What were you saying? So I'm just going to say this. I was thinking about that treasure hunt Carl found. For a moment, I don't know what he's talking about. Oh, the thing he found in the crawl space. I was thinking. TJ leans on the shovel's handle, looking away. Thinking that we should open it, together. Okay. I say it slowly, realising how delicate of a topic this is. Is there a reason why you want to open it? TJ sighs, deeply looking up at the deep red and orange sky. I feel like... I always feel like things happen for a reason. We were just talking about finding closure yesterday. Okay. So, I feel like this might be a way to do it. Maybe read what he he had to say. Maybe go on one of his last hunts. TJ swallows hard. I can sort of see where he's coming from. Sidney always wrote stupid riddles and stories with his treasure hunts. It might mean something to read something he wrote so long ago. Okay. I keep coming up short with what I want to say. Again, I can see why TJ might think this is the answer. I'm not so sure. Well, um, I guess I can ask Carl about it. Did you want everyone there? Maybe. Maybe just us. We can let the others read it later if they want. I don't think Flynn... I nod quickly. Yeah, that makes sense. So you uh, want to do that tomorrow? Um, see if we can do it tonight. We've only got a few days left and this is making me nervous. TJ gives a light laugh. Yeah, Sydney's treasure hunts could be pretty elaborate. Oh yeah, definitely. Are we starting to be able to talk about him normally again? Maybe TJ's right about this. Okay, I'll text him back and ask if I can call him. Okay. It takes me a little bit to figure out how to word TJ's request, so I just decide to ask if we can come over and talk. While we wait for Carl's response, TJ abruptly looks back up at me. Are you and Carl um, friendly with each other? Huh? I mean, how he kissed you. What? No! I laugh. That was just Carl being drunk. Okay. TJ goes back to digging, his ears twitching around. I grin. What? Are you jealous? No! He says it way too fast and loud. Hey, if you want to give me a kiss, I don't mind. TJ doesn't respond and said, focusing hard on the ground he's digging up. Oh, if you're shy, I can do it instead. I see his eyes widen, but he still doesn't say anything. I make kissy sounds at him, and that's when he flings some dirt up at me, smattering my pants with dark brown spots. Oh, come on. I see TJ smirk as he goes right back to work. Mm. I'm thinking about picking up another dirt club, but that's when my phone buzzes again. Okay. And before we return to Carl's, that's where we're going to end this one. Thanks for listening. Mr. We'll